Hey everybody, this is Midnight Update. I'm Seamus Byrne. Welcome to Tuesday, 23rd of June. So it seems some Aussie scientists at ANU have made a new breakthrough in the development of data teleportation, devising a method that makes quantum entanglement simpler than ever before. Now, according to news.com.au, the team has cut down the number of light sources and receivers to one of each, which is actually a major step forward in what is still a ridiculously difficult science that is still a long way from being useful to those of us who live in the real world. But then it doesn't matter how many news outlets refer to this stuff as teleportation, it's not gonna beam you up anywhere. In other science news, the Hubble Space Telescope had a bit of a computer glitch after the recent system upgrade. Spotted over at Atomic, the word is that the new computer started playing up and reached a point where commands simply weren't going anywhere. Thankfully, NASA seems to have a subscription to the IT crowd support desk as their next solution was turning it off and back on again. And it worked! See kids, before you perform a thousand super complicated system checks, it's better to go with the simplest checklist first. Now, we've got some catching up to do over the next few days. During my recent downtime, I've been bouncing around the world and now have a backlog of event coverage and interviews to share. First, a look at last week's Nokia Connections event in Singapore, where I got up to speed on Nokia's new OV strategy, as well as their latest handsets. Now here we are taking a quick look at the N97, which is the new flagship. Um, this is the new home screen. Uh, and you can see you can actually have five widgets if you turn the screen, uh, change their orientation. But you have one, two, three, four, five widget spaces in which you can actually uh, customize to have whatever apps that you want to have on your front page. On top of obviously your clock and your basic details. But uh, this menu option here, that is also changeable, so you can uh, change any of these uh, widgets. And it's quite simple as well. I think if you just uh, tap, you can add content, and that was an empty slot. So I could jump in and add an email widget, and that'll then put my uh, email in so that I'll always see that on the front page. And let's not forget these guys have things set up. So, you know, there's Facebook, I believe there's Twitter options, got news, uh, photo sharing, all through Ovi, and, uh, and plenty of options in there as well. And if you, know, you want to change where something is, you just drag and, and it'll switch that position around. So that's quite nice. And then of course, this is the N97. So it flips up nicely and you've got your little thumb pad keyboard there. Um, it's a nice little system actually. You can see here that uh, this is how they have created that little table um, for this to sit up on, so that it still remains flat. See that? It's quite clever, isn't it? I think it's pretty. It's a pretty nice little system. So before we were looking at the features on the the black N97, but obviously this is a white one as well. That's probably going to be one of those things where certain networks get certain colour versions, all that jazz. Uh, back in Australia, we'll be getting uh, we're getting a, a launch event on the first of July, I believe. So. We'll find out a lot more about exactly how it's going to launch in Australia at that stage. But it's nice to get a, an early look now. This is the new Nokia E72. Uh, and we have... We have... Um, and there's, the on-screen layout's quite nice. Um, and one of the other things that they've just mentioned uh, is this new optical Navi key. So, so instead of having to click, you, know, you can still click. You know, you can click to move around like you used to but you can also just scroll by rubbing uh, this plate kind of like you, you would with your old, um, you know, touch pads, things like that. Now this is one of the other announcements. It is the Nokia 5530 Express Music. Um, now this is actually a new touchscreen phone um, and it's got some nice little features on it. Now this is kind of the, the ton contact system is something that they've mentioned. Sorry, I'm getting my light all over the place here. Um, let's go back. Um, but yeah, they've got this new contact system, um, which in the in the speech today they mentioned uh, you can have about 20 of your main contacts here in this sort of scroll scroll option, uh, and they said in the speech that you'll be able to get different social media contacts attached to these features, so that you could email, phone, 
and then I, I'm guessing Facebook or Twitter, but I've just been told it's not quite uh, operating on that level yet um, and that you will still need to download other apps. But um, that would be a nice feature once it's there. And, um, and then you've got your customizable menu bar here where you can put any of the apps uh, you know, that you might grab from the OV store into the bottom here. And I've been told you can have more than one row as well. And then obviously this is first and foremost a music phone. So uh, that's you know, a nice set of features there. Okay, now this is pretty impressive. This is Age of Empires 3, a mobile version. Someone's playing it and um, that looks pretty hella good for a mobile game. It's hard to understand exactly what it is with, uh, with Asian girls in short schoolgirl style skirts. Slightly odd, but there you go. We're in Singapore. One of the things that's being discussed about the OV mapping service is the idea of uh, 3D landmarks. So uh, this is kind of something, yeah, that seems to be uh, popping up here in this particular stall. They're kind of pointing out objects like uh, our good old Harbour Bridge, um, that these things will actually be mapped in 3D on, uh, on your different services. So uh, I think they've also got another interesting on a desktop here, which actually shows again the idea of 3D objects within the OV mapping environment, which certainly obviously helps if you don't know where the hell you are. A map sometimes doesn't always get the message across, uh, at least a basic map. So being able to actually see the main objects you're looking for um, is definitely going to be something quite helpful. So that's a nice idea. And that's all for tonight's update. Thanks for stopping by. Join us weeknights around midnight Sydney time for Daily Geek News and for more coverage visit midnightupdate.com.